Thank you for joining us today. If you are not an ATA member, please consider joining at https colon slash slash atalink.org slash become a member. The views expressed in this presentation are those of the speaker and do not reflect the official policy or position of the United States Air Force, the Department of Defense, the United States Government, or the Airlift Tanker Association. Please take advantage of the question and answer feature in Teams to submit your questions anytime during the presentation. There is no need to wait until the end of the presentation portion to submit your questions. Also make sure to like questions by clicking the thumbs up icon. That way we know what you want to hear about. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're listening to this presentation from. I'd really like to thank everybody for the opportunity to present at this airlift and tanker symposium. It's a great opportunity and it comes at a time where I would prefer to speak to you all face to face. Uh, I think that's a, a much better delivery, but the challenging circumstances bring us to this digital uh, environment and it serves as a really good backdrop for the things that I'd like to talk to this symposium about during this presentation uh, and an emphasis on robust need for communications uh, and the continued need for connectivity and its heightened importance uh, during times of challenge and uncertainty. Uh, by enabling our forces with greater connectivity across our operating space, it actually enables our airmen and their women to achieve and operate seamlessly across a wide spectrum of their operating environment. I'm Air Commodore Carl Newman from the Royal Australian Air Force, and I currently serve as the commander of our Air Mobility Group. Uh, or as we call it, AMG for the military who are in, fascinated with TLAs. Uh, my group consists of about 1,500 people uh, across a couple of wings, uh, working with a wide range of industry partners uh, and a broad cross-section of personnel that make up our air mobility enterprise. The mission of AMG uh, is to provide combat air mobility that enables the joint force to achieve military effect through peace and war. Uh, and that mission is deliberately established to ensure that we're ready to conduct operations across the full spectrum of military requirements. We achieve the delivery of that air mobility through, as I said, two wings, uh, five flying operational units, uh, six aircraft type, uh, and an command and control centre uh, that brings it all together and is key to the connectivity we need to, to continue that mission. We're a relatively small force, but I think we have really capable assets uh, and people that allow us to deliver what I think is quite an outsized effect for the, for the force size that we have, both here in Australia, uh, domestically, and also within our region and, and broader across the globe, supporting our government's requirements and our Defence Forces requirements. Australia has a really unique geography. Uh, we are a large island continent, uh, considerable size and, and comparable to continental United States in size, but a very dispersed uh, population centres, quite concentrated population centres with vast distances between them. We also sit in an environment where we have uh, increasing interest uh, and engagement requirements within the Indo-Pacific. Uh, circumstances are changing rapidly uh, and that requires to meet those interests a large demand for access uh, and mobility. And air mobility, uh, as you all know, with its reach, its speed and its agility, uh, provides an excellent capability to meet those engagement requirements and provide that access. From our small footprint that we have within the Royal Australian Air Force's Air Mobility Group, Aircraft are really capable of operating across a suite of operational roles and, and environments. The agility and reach that we provide uh, generally means that AMG is one of the Australian Defence Force's first elements that are on the ground in any government response. And we're quite often the last ones to leave. And I don't think that would be any different from any air mobility operator. Now throughout our history, within Air Mobility Group, we've been a reliable provider of our personnel and cargo, a movement of personnel and cargo within Australia. 
and indeed within our region. Utilising our platforms, we're able to, on behalf of government, enable projection of joint effect from ranging from humanitarian assistance and disaster relief or era medical evacuation through until uh, engagement and enhancement with our regional partners uh, right up through uh, projection of military power. How we do that in an evolving environment uh, has been really interesting to observe over the last number of years. Technology continues to proceed at pace uh, and the environments we operate in continue to evolve at pace and, and are incredibly dynamic and I think increasingly dynamic with time. Over the past 12 months, AMG has seen our people uh, and our aircraft employed across a variety of roles and taskings, all of which have relied on robust uh, and resilient communications networks that provide the connectivity that have been essential for that mission access uh, and to enable us to deliver those effects across vast distances. And the technology has given us the means to complete those tasks. Uh, they've safeguarded our lines of communications. They've provided the necessary connectivity we've needed to achieve what we uh, have set out to do. But in the end, the technology has just been an enabler. Uh, and it's actually our people that have achieved the true connectivity and the true communications effects required to achieve the mission. Our people have leveraged their existing relationships with partners uh, across units with command and control agencies and it's those relationships that have been the key to connectivity and that's something that I'll talk about today. Uh, I want to highlight some of the recent operations that our AMG folk have been uh, employed in in the last 12 months uh, and use those as uh, examples of where connectivity has been key and I'd like to highlight the fact that air mobility in itself is actually a fundamental part and a critical part of the connectivity needed by our societies and our defence forces uh, to achieve what we need to achieve. So Operation Bushfire Assist uh, from October uh, last year in 19 through to February 2020 this year, um, many in the audience will be aware that Australia experienced the most catastrophic bushfires we've, we've had for quite some time uh, across a wide uh, area of Australia, particularly on the east and south coast. Uh, our government uh, created a national response to what was an unprecedented event uh, and mobilised large elements of the Australian Defence Force to assist as part of that national response. And that required a great demand, put a great demand on Air Mobility, an uh, Air Mobility Group to provide that logistic support uh, and that transport uh, and mobility requirements to move our personnel. But not just our personnel, uh, throughout the Christmas period, uh, we were evacuating civilians from townships under threat. Uh, we were rotating civilian firefighters, uh, our rural fire service folk who perform magnificently uh, in protecting property and life. Uh, and we rotated those personnel into and out of operational areas to ensure that uh, they could achieve their mission. And we were moving essential equipment through that period as well, both for the Defence Force uh, and for our state emergency response services. This response was meeting a requirement of state governments, of federal governments, and required strong communication between uh, our customers uh, and us to ensure that we were delivering the right air mobility effects. The effort showed that air mobility capability, when it achieves the right connectivity, the right level of communications between stakeholders, uh, we actually provide that connectivity chain that's necessary. We're, we are an essential part of connectivity for any operation. Uh, operation Southern Discovery. Operation to Southern Discovery is the ADF's contribution to Australia's whole of government approach uh, led by our Department of Environment in Antarctica. Uh, Australia has real interest in scientific research in the Antarctic region uh, and we have some bases down there that re require logistic support in really challenging circumstances. Uh, and the ADF contributes through the provision of air mobility assets to move equipment down uh, and support the logistics requirements 
of the Australian Antarctic Division. We provide an air bridge that supports that scientific effort uh, and without that air bridge that we provide would substantially complicate the logistics requirements for the Australian Antarctic Division. We provide the connectivity between mainland Australia and the Australian Antarctic Division personnel uh, substantial distance away from our mainland down in Antarctica. Again, air mobility providing that connectivity that's needed to, for others to succeed in their mission. Humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. Unfortunately, uh, within our region, we've had to respond uh, increasingly to a number of events where folks uh, have been subject to crises or humanitarian disasters uh, and are suffering. And AMG stands ready to support those, whether they're in Australia and Australians in need through bushfires, uh, or for our close regional partners where they need support. A regular task we undertake is to deliver support to countries within Southwest Pacific or Southeast Asia that may have been impacted. Uh, and using a combination of our aircraft and the relationships we've established uh, with those countries, uh, we've been able to respond really rapidly and provide meaningful support to people in need uh, and a really valuable uh, and important mission. Our humanitarian assistance and disaster relief has spanned operations such as Vanuatu Assist following a devastating cyclone that impacted the island nation of Vanuatu. Uh, we responded by providing supplies that uh, were able to alleviate the suffering of people in those circumstances. A White Island volcano eruption in New Zealand and a significant number of Australians impacted uh, who were visiting that location and we conducted an, an operation to conduct mass uh, aeromedical evacuation to bring affected Australians home and alleviate the pressure on the New Zealand medical system. Operation Indonesia Assist uh, following efforts where as a result of earthquakes and tsunamis uh, in that country. Uh, and again, Australia was very glad to be able to assist our close uh, and very important neighbours and friends uh, in Indonesia as part of that response. And air mobility formed a vital part of delivering the necessary aid that alleviated that suffering and indeed provided the connectivity between Australia and those areas that, were, that we needed to reach to help alleviate that suffering. So through all of these operations, air mobility is actually a key element of, of connectivity, which is part of the theme today. So yes, we need to connect our air mobility warriors, but I, don't, I think it's worthwhile not losing sight of the fact that we are part of the communications process and connectivity process. That's one way of, of viewing connectivity. Uh, and obviously the more, or the more obvious way is to look at how we connect ourselves and, and the types of technologies that we use and techniques that we use to enhance communications and, and maintain that connectivity between individuals. Um, like your workforce, 2020 has been a challenging year for our workforce and it's led to some unprecedented ways of continuing the connectivity that we've required to get the mission done. We've responded to new uh, ways, we've looked at innovative techniques uh, to keep our members connected in a time where many are working from home uh, to protect themselves, protect our force, preserve our force uh, and ensure that we're not a vector of COVID into our communities. A time when many of our folks who have had to isolate following missions or go into quarantine after missions to again achieve those effects. Uh, and during times like these, robust command and control uh, becomes increasingly important and paramount. Uh, like your respective defence forces, the ADF uh, and certainly AMG has seen great opportunity in COVID in how we can enhance the way we conduct command and control and maintain that connectivity and communications with our folks. The way we can uh, articulate our commander's intent and allow our folks to go off and achieve the missions we need to achieve. Uh, great use of applications uh, an emerging suite of applications. We've been using Signal messaging application uh, and heavily leveraging Microsoft Teams uh, to keep our folks connected through this time. Uh, and I think this has seen great benefit and, and will benefit us as we come out of the COVID challenges. Uh, we've 
learnt a lot of ways of maintaining connectivity uh, whilst allowing the benefits of a more flexible working style. Uh, but I do note that we need to ensure that the lessons we learn through this, uh, when they're applied, we also look at how we keep those communication mechanisms secure and appropriate for each operating environment that we go into. We're seeing a great uh, evolution in the way we manage information. Uh, there is an ability to provide instant messaging and data flow, not just to our people uh, on the ground, but also our people in the air. And the Royal Australian Air Force has implemented, implemented a broad suite of communications technologies across our air mobility platforms. Link 16 line of sight, Link, Link 16 beyond line of sight, wide and broadband satellite communications, uh, enhanced UHF communications, increased uh, cryptography to, to secure those communication suites. We're giving ourselves a broad suite of communications options that can sustain connectivity uh, and provide a level of resilience should one of those bearers not be available in any certain operating environment. Uh, but it also provides us to select the best bearer and the best means of communications depending on context. And I think that's probably one of the keys to connectivity is ensuring we have a set of options that allows us to build the right connectivity for the right circumstances. We've invested substantially in our airframes and our capability that allows both our air crews uh, and our air mobility personnel and our customers to maintain the connectivity they need to get the missions done, ranging from the unclassified and, and uncontested environments through into more contested and degraded environments in a more classified uh, way. And those technology options that allow, enable us to do that just are evolving at pace. Uh, it's critical that we remain agile uh, and leverage those technological options as they come through uh, so that we remain credible and relevant and provide a force uh, that is postured and fit for the future. Um, but it is also really important that we don't lose sight, we don't pursue technology for technology's sake, and we remember that in all circumstances we need to ensure that the end game is met. And that's what, that we're actually enhancing the communications and connectivity effect that we need to achieve our air mobility mission. So how do we do that when technology is so fast paced? Well, we need to understand it that, and continue that understanding and, and further develop that technology is just an enabler and the true way we achieve connectivity and, and true connection between folks is the strength in the relationships that we develop with those that we will work with and our key stakeholders. It's relationships that provide meaning to connectivity. And so as a command, AMG is focusing on developing a culture where we value relationships and we value the time that it takes to develop a relationship. Uh, and we value and place an investment in and provide the time for people to, to truly develop genuine relationships across the air mobility enterprise and our customer base. Air mobility enables others to excel, that's what we exist for. Um, and we need to develop a culture that establishes trust, trust from our customer base, trust across the enterprise. And we do that when we enable others to excel. If we have a service ethos, which is what we're striving to achieve in our command, where our individuals who are providing air mobility effect will go out of their way to do whatever they can to ensure that when we deliver our customers to wherever they need to be, they are in the best situation to go off and achieve their mission. They're either rested or they've been given the, the best information during their um, sortie. Uh, they remain connected with the folks they need to remain connected to uh, and such that they're as oriented and fit for purpose when they step off the ramp of our aircraft as possible, then we've done our job. We need to do that even if it's an inconvenience to us. Uh, we're not flying air mobility to make our jobs easier. We're conducting the air mobility mission to enable others. And a service ethos and mindset uh, is important to enable others to do their mission. And it starts establishing the trust that's needed uh, to fill those relationships. As we build those relationships with the key partners and build that trust through that service ethos, um, 
We do that through a really good understanding of operational intent. What is the purpose of the mission? And how can we best act uh, and put our effort in to help the overall intent of the mission? When we do that in a genuine way, in a committed way, uh, we'll win the friends that we need, we'll maintain the friendships we need, not just in the, as an air mobility enterprise, but we'll win and maintain those friends that the Defence Force needs and indeed our nation needs uh, to ensure the security requirements are met for our nation. So my team, I expect them to work across our air mobility enterprise. It's not just the air crew uh, and the uniform maintainers. Uh, we will work with our industry partners. We will work with our combat support sections, our air bases, uh, with our customer base. In true partnerships, I stress to our team that I do not want them to be a burden or a consumer of someone else's product and expect others to help us. We work in partnerships to, to create shared solutions. Uh, and when we view our relationship with those uh, who we work with who might support our mission and those who we support, and we view that through a partnership lens, we're, gen we're generating partnerships that assist shared solutions. We don't seek to apportion blame when things go wrong. We just get together in a partnership to work out how as an air mobility enterprise we can solve the issues and the challenges we face. And the partnerships lead to stronger relationships uh, and those strong relationships give us better and faster outcomes. That's the connectivity we need to sustain. By having that values-based uh, behaviours in, in our AMG members, we encourage those strong and genuine people-to-people -people relationships. Our folks will continue to leverage technology, but it's not the be all and end all required to keep people connected. Uh, personal and genuine relationships are actually will develop that resilience that when some of our technology solutions are tested, we still maintain the connectivity that we need, the understanding we need to achieve our mission, and we can be agile in an uncertain future. So how have we done this during COVID? Uh, it's been a test to stay connected with our partners. It's been a test to stay connected with our people. Um, but I've been amazed at the resilience across our enterprise and, and, and the people who work within my organisation. I believe this is, uh, COVID's actually provided us an opportunity to strengthen the way we communicate uh, and ensure our people have the right information at the right time. The Australian Defence Force has actually created, uh, during COVID, a COVID task force that sits at the highest levels of our defence enterprise. It's a task force uh, and an interesting one where it does not have any direct command and control relationship. It's not a directive command and control, it's not supported or supporting, but it's a really good uh, coordination element to ensure that we can continue defence business in a way that meets the expectations of Australian government, the Australian public, uh, and we're able to operate in what is a complex environment. Uh, that task force is key and our command and control elements within our mobility are closely engaged with it uh, and we leverage them to ensure we get access uh, that we need to achieve our mission. They have become our interface with whole of government departments, with state agencies, state police forces, international border forces uh, and have worked that coordination that is more complex in COVID that have assisted us to maintain the access we need to achieve the missions that support our customer base. I think this highlights that organisational structure is actually a key part of connectivity. We need to set the right organisational structures but not rely on just doctrine. Uh, a doctrinal approach might have set up a direct command chain with a COVID task force, which may have actually impeded a coherent and agile response. So setting the right organisational structure and, and the right connectivity links and relationships within that organisational structure a key part of maintaining the connectivity that we need. Uh, through COVID, managing our, the welfare of our people has been paramount. Uh, our leadership have been challenged in staying connected with their people. Uh, folks have spent a long time in isolation, uh, but our leadership stood up. Uh, use of electronic devices to main, and the digital means to maintain connectivity, virtual coffees, virtual chats, uh, have enabled our leadership teams to stay in touch with their people and understand their concerns, worries and help manage their issues. I've been really impressed with the way that my teams maintained their connections. Throughout the process we've, we've learnt more of what our people 
uh, want and how they operate and their, their need for information. So we've been forced to challenge some of the traditional ways we do work. Uh, and use of the digital means, I think, opens up a, a broad range of opportunities. Our people uh, increasingly uh, would like information at their fingertips and they operate best with that way. And, in, and indeed, my folks now have a direct line to our defence, to the highest levels of defence, our defence minister. Uh, and they better understand our defence minister's intent and our chief of defence force's intent and our service chief's intent through that direct access via digital means. And I think that's really valuable because when I send them out into the region or across the globe and they better understand the higher levels of intent because of that access to that information, they engage in a much more coherent and effective way to achieve the outcomes that the Australian nation requires from them. Uh, and they're able to build those enduring and genuine partnerships and relationships that I talked about that we need to achieve those national security effects. 2020 has been a pretty challenging year. Uh, lots of unknowns that have occurred uh, and unprecedented challenges. But I think as we've strived to establish that service ethos that I talked about and have gone the hard yards to establish the trust with our partners, that's actually set us up well to respond to those challenges uh, by having the right culture that values relationships and establishing those relationships early means that when the crisis hits, uh, we've found ourselves in a more resilient place to be able to respond. So technology will continue to get faster and, uh, and evolve at pace, and we will leverage that for the technological solutions to maintaining our connectivity. But the people-to-people -people relationships will remain key. That, they are the things that will help us achieve what we need to achieve to get the job done, to allow us to achieve the shared goal of everyone across the air mobility enterprise which is actually just providing quality air mobility that enables our customers to achieve the effects they need to achieve. So I hope you've gained something from uh, this discussion. I have really appreciated the opportunity. It's helped me clarify some thoughts on how we stay connected and, and some lessons we'll take into the future. Uh, I look forward to working with many of you in the future, and I know across our air mobility community um, that happens very often. Uh, I thank all of you for your service to our air mobility community uh, and uh, wish you safe travels and, and safe operations into the future. Thank you very much uh, and please uh, enjoy the rest of this symposium. The views expressed in this presentation are those of the speaker and do not reflect the official policy or position of the United States Air Force, the Department of Defense, the United States government, the Australian government, or the Airlift Tanker Association. If you are not an ATA member, please consider joining at https colon slash slash atalink.org slash become a member. Thank you for participating in our virtual presentation. Please close this window and return to the agenda on our website to view another presentation.